Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So today I'm super excited to share some of our research on uh, understanding and supporting informal learning in online communities. Um, most of us here today probably have been participating in a lot of different online communities. Um, on the slides here, are just some examples. Well, online communities can take in many different formats, for example, from the data science competition platform Kaggle to people tweeting and retweeting around Twitter hashtags to platform that kind of host user generated artifacts and support feedback exchange. Um, for all these communities, we believe they at least all have something in common. And what is that? That is, they all support learning in some format. So when we talk about learning, we probably first think about students being taught by teachers in classroom, and these days probably over Zoom. Um, but we are all in this area of um, internet, and we have a lot of interesting in um, interest-driven online communities emerging as new settings for learning. And in those communities, there are tens of thousands of users who share the same interests. Um, they connect online, they create, share, and interact with each other's contributions, and learning happens in this process. And this specific type of learning we are talking about here uh, is what we call informal learning, which is directed by the learners themselves is socially supported by the communities around the learner. And the learner often have many options and can choose their own learning styles and learning pathways. And informal learning online communities is still um, a pretty much emerging and relatively new area for research. Um, so today, um, I mean, in, and also in general, using our research, we want to argue that all online communities have the potential to be learning communities. And such learning opportunities need more attention from both the research and practitioner communities um, and should be supported by platform design and community facilitation. Um, and therefore, for today, I'm going to share some of our recent research on this topic. Um, specifically, to open up the discussion, I will cover the overview of our findings from a selection of three papers that we published this year um, on different communities um, and different types and styles of learning. Um, the first paper um, starts to explore the different things that members can learn from the online community and different learning pathways. Um, then the next two papers will get into details on how learning happened, uh, what are people's needs and challenges in learning uh, in online settings. And we will talk about two specific ways that learning can happen and their trade-offs respectively. Uh, members of the community using community generated resources, um, as well as um, the learning pathway of feedback exchange. And finally, uh, so we will open up the discussion on the implication of our research. Uh, that is, how can we support learning in online communities through platform design and community facilitations? Okay, uh, let's get into uh, the first paper here. Uh, so our exploration on the different things that members can learn from online communities. Uh, this is published, this will be published in uh, the conference of CSCW this year. Um, so to explore these questions, what are different things uh, that can be learned? We first look into existing theories of community-based learning, um, what's being learned and what contributes to learning. Um, we look at the theory of community of practice, which is a classic framework of understanding learning in online communities. And this framework is developed by anthropologists actually, uh, starting studying mostly co-located in-person communities. We're a group of people learning from, uh, we're a group of people, they kind of learn from each other while working towards a common interest or goal. Um, that's the definition of commu uh, community of practice. And this body of literature is actually where we first got the idea that online communities can support multiple learning outcomes uh, and pathways. And according to our summary of literature, 
um, the learning outcome in a community of practice can take in uh, these three formats. So first, learning about the domain as a learning outcome. Um, this refers to learning of knowledge and skills for the core tasks that are necessary for achieving the explicit goal in the community. Um, for example, um, in a programming community, the skill can be uh, how to contribute to the programming project. Uh, and in a different community, the skill can be different. And the second learning outcome is learning about the community itself, which means the development of identity as a community member, um, developing relationships, affinities, and sense of belonging. And the third learning outcome is learning about the practice. This means uh, the learner kind of adopt community specific values and practices such as the style of their contribution uh, that will be accepted and appreciated by its members. And so those are the thing, different things that can be learned in a community at the conceptual level. Uh, but how does learning happen here? So according to the uh, theory of community of practice, uh, learning happens through the phenomenon of what we call legitimate peripheral participation or in short, um, LPP. This means newcomers, they begin to participate in a group from the periphery of the community, actually. So not directly taking the core responsibility of the community, but by collaborating and helping out other members with tasks that are easy, but still valuable to the community. And like the different kinds of things that can be learned in the community, we also identified from literature um, some different types of um, participation or different types of LPP. Um, so those are different ways of contribution that a newcomer can make in the community. For example, a newcomer can make contribution to the core tasks by directly working towards the community's explicit goal. They can also engage with practice proxies in the community. Uh, that is to observe and participate in previous documentation or traces of work practices uh, generated by other members. And they can also exchange feedback with other community members. And finally, they can make friends and form social bonds in the community. After identifying the set of potential learning outcomes and potential ways to uh, contribute to the community, we look at the real world online community um, to ex examine how different types of uh, participation, newcomers participation, uh, contribute to different things that they can learn in the community. And the specific online community we focus on uh, is Scratch, which is a large online community built around a block-based programming system where novices can make and share programs. The core, value the core goal of this community is to help novices uh, to develop computational thinking, computational skills, while making sharing programs and engaging with other uh, people's programs. And we did a large scale quantitative study on three years of Scratch user data. Uh, we constructed variables based on the things newcomers can do in the community to represent the different types of uh, participation and learning outcomes. And here's some quick overview of our findings. We found contribution to core tasks is positively uh, associated with learning of domain skills, not surprisingly, uh, but it's also negatively associated with staying active in the community in the long term um, and learning the community's specific values and practices. We found engagement with um, documentation artifact made by other members in the community is actually negatively associated with the learning of the domain skills and development of community identities. We found giving feedback as a newcomer, on the other hand, is possibly associated with staying active in the community in the long term and adoption of community specific practices. And we see the similar results of building social bonds as a newcomer, uh, as a type of participation. So the main takeaway here is we found that different types of newcomer participation 
make different contributions to the learning outcomes uh, that are possible in online communities of practice. And for this reason, when designing for community-based learning, we should take the different learning pathways into consideration. What is productive for, for some type of learning outcomes can be unhelpful for others and vice versa. For example, social features such as feedback mechanism and social bonding opportunities, although may not be the main focus of the community, could be implemented to help users to develop a sense of belonging in the community and learn about community specific values. And at the same time, although contribution to core tasks can help learners um, to develop their domain skills, direct contribution can be too difficult and discouraging for newcomers to stay in the community and learn about its values. Therefore, easier alternatives to the core tasks, along with reminders that social activities are also legitimate type of participation uh, that, that can be worked towards learning, um, could be offered to the newcomers in the community. Okay, so that was the first paper, like an overview of what kinds of things can be learned in community. Um, now with, with the second and third paper, let's zoom into some specific ways that learning can happen, um, as well as the user needs and challenges in the process. And uh, in this paper that we published in the CHI conference this year, uh, specifically, we look at how engagement of community generated resources, uh, kind of how, how does that affect learning? Um, and in the study, we look at the Scratch online community again. Um, in particular, we look at how knowledge is learning to use data structures. As an example of learning of computational concepts, the domain learning in Scratch. Um, user can engage with a var variety of community generated resources about data structures, including Q&A threads in the Scratch forum um, and example and tutorials that other members generated that are available uh, in, on the platform. And for this study, we conducted a quality to analysis on a sample of discussion thread from the Scratch forum. Uh, we build a theoretical model that explains how users learn computation concepts using community generated learning resources. And we form a, um, after that, we form a theories of quantitative hypothesis testing analysis and found general support for our uh, theoretical model. Uh, let's take a quick tour of the key findings. So uh, the most important thing we found from this study is there is a trade-off of community-generated resources um, in terms of learning. And uh, we described it in terms of a social feedback loop model uh, that we brought up as part of our theory. So the model starts from that users want to create and share certain artifacts in the community. And we call those artifacts uh, use case A here. Uh, using the domain concepts uh, that needed to be learned uh, in the community using the domain skills. So when users in this process, when users run into problems, they will turn to the community for support. They will tend to ask questions framed specifically around this use case and learn from community resources framed in the same use case, which is really good. This is um, exactly what online informal learning is. And the result is, as the user receives support, they produce new artifacts, use the same use case uh, that can serve as learning resources from others. And this, however, will create a problem. Users in the future can use these learning resources, become even more likely to create the same use case, uh, same art, like create the artifact with the same use case. And the outcome of the loop is that as certain use case becomes popular, the community's learning resources are increasingly focused on the same use cases, uh, which makes other more innovative uh, case of making artifact harder to gain attention in the community and eventually die out. And so we found support. So this is a model we developed from observing in the community. Uh, we also did a series of large-scale quantitative analysis on the Scratch community data 
to find support for this model. Um, for example, our model says that users um, exposed to popular use cases will create similar artifacts. And here we use a name that users give to their data structures as a proxy of use cases. Um, and we hypothesize that users who have downloaded other members' project involving popular variables and list names will be more likely to use the same names in their own projects. Uh, that means they're creating the same artifact using the, using the concepts. And we found that users who have been exposed to popular list names represented by the solid line in the figure will be more likely to use, in other words, less likely to never use popular names of uh, data structures in their project compared to users who have no, never downloaded projects with um, popular, popular data structure names um, that is represented by the dashed line. So the key takeaway here is, so there's an important trade-off around community generated content as learning resources that uh, we as designers and facilitators of online community should be aware of. Um, on one hand, learners can use those community gen generated resources to learn difficult domain related concepts, um, which is really good. But on the other hand, this kind of learning can be kind of superficial and not generalizable and the peer produced learning resources can be restricted to limited use cases, limited interests, kind of pushing away people with more innovative ideas. Um, therefore, additional regulation at the community level needs to be implemented, such as to support a wider range of inspiration, to broaden um, participation among members with unique background, unique interests, uh, and to kind of uh, construct some scaffolds uh, for generalizable knowledge to help people see the overall concept, overall uh, high level kind of domain skills. Um, so that was the second study we wanted to share. Um, and beyond that, this is the third study uh, and the final part of this talk. Um, so another specific way of learning that we look at um, is feedback exchange. And feedback exchange is very important to learning because it can help learners to get other people's input and find ways to improve their artifact and sharpen their skills. And in this study specifically, we'll focus on the community of online fan fiction authors and how they exchange feedback to make their story better uh, and learn writing skills. Um, the study is interview study with fan fiction authors with diverse background using different platforms. And we talk to them directly. We ask about their practices of exchanging feedback practices with other um, members online and how they identify and build relationship with uh, other feedback providers. And one of the most important takeaway uh, that, that's from this study is that in contrast to the design of many online communities dedicated to feedback exchange, where the main focus is to support feedback from a lot of online strangers to ensure the quantity of feedback, we found that in fanfiction's community, as an example, it is really important for feedback providers um, to, to have the real authentic relationships with people who are seeking feedback. Real relationships can have a lot of benefits on feedback. For example, it features deep trust and establish common ground, which will help people to ease the social barriers around giving and receiving critiques, especially criticisms or negative comments about their work. And in our participants' work, they like to get feedback from someone they can have trust already. Um, the feedback provider will trust the writer not to take any critical feedback personally. And because the writer has a relationship with the feedback provider, they know where they are coming from and can receive critiques easily. And real relationships can also help mitigate the social anxiety of presenting half-baked ideas, allowing feedback exchange to happen in the very beginning of the creative process. And this will help people to fix any issues early on. For example, in our participants' work, 
before they have been even been drafting the story, they would bounce ideas off with people they have trusted um, and they are part of the feedback cycle from the very beginning. We further identify factors that support formation of real relationship for feedback in online communities. For example, writers felt most comfortable getting early stage feedback from small, close group of other fans. And this could take place in form of maybe um, a section of the Discord server, a chat group on Facebook, or um, a last travel, travel, traveled forum. Um, and in the words of our participant, those small private communities support them to privately talking to people whose stuff I read or other friends. And it's really qu quite nice feeling of um, belonging to the community belonging to the feedback exchange group. And in general, relationships um, of feedback kind of move from public to private spaces. Public comment sections or community events are helpful for users to identify other people's expertise and interest, after which they will reach out to potential feedback providers and deepen their relationships through interacting, socialization, uh, and even sometimes disclosing personal identities in a small, private, safe niche of the larger community. So the implication here is that to support feedback change, we should consider the different social needs uh, at different stage of the creative process, um, but also for just for the feedback exchange process in general, we should really kind of foster the real authentic relationship development between feedback seekers and providers, um, help feedback seekers to signal and uh, identify feedback providers in the larger community, and to also empower them with access control and other safety tools needed to create a safe, inclusive space uh, for feedback exchange. So I've been talking a lot for a while, I uh, introduced our study on what's um, our kind of current opinions on what can be learning in online communities and what are some different pathways to learning. Uh, now I want to open up the discussion to everyone. And um, so I'd invite everyone to share, you know, in the communities they participate in. So what are some um, signals of learning? What are some things that can be learned? Uh, and also how can we support learning in online communities? What are some potential challenges um, and what are some potential solutions?